Hey everyone, it's Jack here, Talk Nero City, uh, back for another video. I hope you're all doing very well indeed, uh, probably aside from the football, because that's going horrendously at the moment. Uh, but nonetheless, I hope outside of football, life is good. Back today to talk about the events that unfolded on Saturday, uh, more off the pitch than on the pitch. And it's funny, isn't it? Because just as we thought we were starting to turn a corner, granted not like a full 90 degree turn, but at least a little meander around the bend uh, with half-decent performances against Burnley and Manchester United. Things were looking up slightly. Uh, we probably had the darkest day of the season against Newcastle. Now, performance aside, which was an absolute car crash, 3-0, uh, Jalinton with two of the goals. Um, it all got very messy off the pitch. Now, I don't think this comes as a shock, um, but the way that things have, have progressed over the last 24 hours is a real concern. I think it's worth probably going back a few months, and I think certain people have raised concerns about what's been going on behind the scenes at Norwich City. Now, if you, I don't know how closely you follow things, maybe off the pitch, but there's been a lot of notable departures from certain departments at Norwich City Football Club. I'm not going to name them. I'm sure you know a few um, in the recruitment side of things, in the media side of things, in the commercial side of things. Really important departments for any functioning business and football club. Uh, we've seen people leave and not necessarily directly replaced. And that's an issue. That's a cause for concern because it means you've got gaps in your, in your teams. Um, but more notably... There's been concern around our sporting, direct, uh, sporting director, Stuart Webber. Now, it's been uh, fairly public knowledge that Stuart Webber is training to climb Mount Everest. I feel like I'm, I'm making all of this up. It just doesn't sound real. Our sporting, direct, the sporting director is training to climb Mount Everest. Brilliant. He's raising money for uh, his foundation, the Summit Foundation, that's raising uh, vital funds for people in need. Brilliant. Um, but it's all kicked off slightly uh, surrounding a recent interview in The Times with Henry Winter. Now, we know Henry Winter, one of the most respected journalists uh, in the UK, writing for one of the most respected publications in the UK. Henry is very close friends with Delia Smith um, and Michael Wynne-Jones. He often gets scoops, usually around this time of the year as well. Um, and I think a lot of people have been concerned around the timing. Now, this interview was probably done, I don't know, week, two weeks ago. And then it's up to Henry uh, and the people at the Times when they release it. Now, it was in Saturday's edition. There's a Saturday pullout. It's just bad luck uh, for Norwich City that it's come out at, at this time. Bad luck uh, also mixed with a, a slight bit of misjudgment because some of the quotes from that interview were very punchy. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing. You can find it easy enough on the Times. It may well be behind a paywall. I think most of the stuff on the Times is. If you can't read the full uh, thing, then there's lots of the juicy bits on the EDP, etc. Now, I've pulled a few of the quotes out and stuck them on the TNC Twitter page. Um, and I think it's just really interesting uh, about how he's gone about things. I think one of the one of the ones that really ground Norwich City fans down was the fact that he said, my life isn't to appease Norwich City fans. If Norwich lose on Saturday, does it ruin my next couple of days? Yes, absolutely. That pain will never leave when you lose a game. But is it the only thing in my life? No. Fair enough. We all have different things going on in life. That's absolutely fine. What really rubbed people up the wrong way are the following two. Delia and Michael didn't want me to leave. So I said, listen, there's only one thing that matters to me in this negotiation. It's not about money, titles or kudos. The only thing I want is the chance to go and achieve a dream. And my dream is climbing Mount Everest. I sleep easy at night because ultimately, as I said to Delia and Michael, if 90% of me isn't good enough, it's fine because I'm already ready to walk out of the door. I'm ready for the next stage of my life. But they wanted me to stay and I'm grateful to them for that. Now, they're quoted verbatim. Um, and that strikes me as a man that isn't fully uh, in the job. That strikes me as an ownership model that has no plan B. And that strikes me as complacency. Now, I like Stuart Webber. I've 
chatted to him on camera, off camera, in different public settings. He is a very switched on individual who is clearly uh, operating at a very high level to be a sporting director at a Premier League football club. There are only an elite few that can manage to do that job. Now, many would argue that he hasn't done the job very well in recent seasons. He is one of the main cogs in the recruitment system that has failed miserably on both Premier League campaigns. He's got some things right. Um, the development of Colney has been nothing short of exceptional, and that's kind of safeguarded us in for, for decades ahead. Um, I think the, the culture off the pitch, certainly up until this season, has been really good and has changed significantly. But he's got it wrong so badly in the Premier League now on two occasions. Now, this isn't solely down to Stuart, but Stuart talks a very good game. And when he's talking about sending managers to war with a bazooka and a tank and all of the other things he lauded about, he has to follow that up. And very few, if any, signings have worked this season. So it leaves us in a position where we're definitely going down. We're going down with a real whimper. We've been poor for the majority of this season. We're going down with a squad that's been assembled on actually significant money with wage bills that are probably uh, teetering beyond too much going down to the championship. So those parachute payments that we will receive will offset the money that we've that we've spent and spent really poorly uh, and also carrying the wages of players that have been signed and, and, and haven't particularly worked. The most worrying thing here is the fact that our ownership in Delia Smith and Michael Wynne Jones, they don't have a plan B. They didn't want Stuart to leave and now Stuart has those two on strings. He's ruling the shots and this power shouldn't be this way. It should be the ownership leading by example and finding the man they want. Now they trust Stuart Webber and they trust, I think probably more, his wife in, in Zoe. Now, Zoe's been here a long while. She's a very um, classy and, and, and intelligent individual. But these two are now leading the ship almost. They've gone, look, we trust you with everything. We want you here. And even if you're not operating at 100%, which is clear, Stuart said it, he's not operating at 100%. It doesn't matter. Now, I'm looking at things and going, okay, now what's going on? Stuart's, um, you know away certain points of the year with his training and his climbing. He's recently climbed Mount Kilimanjaro through uh, arguably a, a pivotal moment in Norwich City season, the January transfer window. And who is it leaving? Well, it's leaving Neil Adams. Neil Adams is, from what I'm hearing, essentially leading day-to-day -day operations. Now, that's a worry because what credentials does Neil Adams have? Uh, a, a, a lovely bloke, um, <laughs> failed with his managerial uh, time at Norwich City, has done some punditry, but what is his credentials in leading a football club in the Premier League? None. So we've got Neil Adams leading things. We've got Stuart Webber, who probably doesn't want to be here anymore, but he is because Delia Smith and Michael Wood jones will let him. And we've got teams dotted around the football club, not operating at full capacity or full potential because people are leaving and they're not being replaced. So on the pitch, it's going wrong because the recruitment's not been good enough. Dean, Dean Smith has been left with Daniel Farker's squad that isn't good enough. And off the pitch, things aren't going well either. So what do we do? Well, we know that the ownership doesn't work in the Premier, in the Premier League. That's an issue. Do we find external investment? That is an argument that can be <laughs> argued forever and ever and ever. But you go down to the championship and it's not guaranteed we bounce straight back. Norwich City fans, I think, are actually really patient and we're not maybe getting fully stuck in to Weber and Co because we think we'll bounce back and then we have bounced back on the last couple of occasions. But that's not easy. Promotion back to the Premier League isn't easy. We'll be going down with probably Burnley and Watford, two teams that will be right up there. You've got teams that aren't progressing from the championship this season that will kick on next season. This is, a, this is tough. And I think the scenes um, outside of Carrow Road after the defeat to Newcastle were worrying. There were granted a very small section of people with banners uh, wanting Stuart Webber out. Um, but I think the reaction from Stuart Webber 
was worrying. He was out there. He was confronting fans. It, it felt quite uh, arrogant in the way he he went about things. Zoe was pushing him back in. She clearly didn't want a ruckus, but that's what they got. Um, and it's going to be a fascinating few months ahead. Now, does Stewart stay? I think there will be a, a very vocal section of Norwich City fans that definitely want him out. What happened yesterday certainly hasn't helped this case. And having spoken to quite well-respected uh, people around the football club, they don't think Stuart's got much of a future left at Norwich City. Now, to be clear here, I think having interests outside of your main occupation is incredibly important. I think it um, helps with self-development. I think it keeps you sane. But Stuart is saying he doesn't want his identity to be identity to be the sporting director of Norwich City. He wants to be a man that is creating change. And his main objectives in life at the moment aren't that of Norwich City. And that's a worry because he's the man leading the ship here. And his heart isn't fully in it. He has said it himself to Henry Winter in The Times. I'd love to know your thoughts on what's happening at Nero City at the moment. Are you Weber in? Are you Weber out? I don't quite want to get that argument going. I think it's a lot more nuanced than that. Here's my standpoint. I like Stuart Weber. I think he's a good bloke and I think he's led this football club forwards. But I think he's got to be very careful now. He's walking on thin ice. He needs to address Norwich City fans and change his tone. Because what we've seen over recent days is that of arrogance and mis formed opinion on what's going on at this football club he screwed up on two Premier League occasions and that's not good enough and yet he seemingly got rule of the roost let me know your thoughts where do we go from here Norwich City fans I'd be really intrigued to know thanks for watching and I'll see you all again very soon bye bye